Well, we're back with more Cleveland Browns action. How can that be? You may be asking yourself. Well, because the 87 Browns were part of the original Cleveland Browns, not the new Cleveland Browns. As we sa said earlier, the Cleveland Browns in 95 moved to Baltimore to become the Ravens. But what I didn't mention was that the NFL felt so bad, they decided to say to Cleveland, okay, you can have a team in 1999. You can have all the records and all that, but you have to wait three years. And finally, Cleveland City Council actually gave them the damn stadium that they wanted, albeit on the site of where Cleveland Memorial Stadium was. So Cleveland had some bite. They brought Ty Detmer as one of their big names. They drafted Tim Couch number one overall. Well, could have been Donovan McNabb, but anyway. The dog pound was ready to go. Drew Carey was basically telling anyone who told a Cleveland joke to shut up. Unfortunately, Pittsburgh told Drew Carey to shut up because at primetime on week one, they won 43 to nil. So Cleveland lost their first ever game. Heavily. Fuck it. There it goes. Cleveland had nothing left. Near the end of, like on Halloween night in 1999, the Browns were playing the Saint, New Orleans Saints at the Superdome. Tim Couch throws this laser Hail Mary touchdown, Cleveland finally gets a win. Like 0 oh, 8, so they started something like that. But anyway, Cleveland got the win. They only won two games during that season. Cleveland also lost Orlando Brown, a prominent tackle, who actually got a ref's penalty flag hit in the, in the eye, and he basically beat up the referee. I mean, he had a good reason. I mean, the referee did beat him up. The, throw something in his eye, and, you know, he thought it was on purpose. Brown's career would actually come to Baltimore for, like, four, five years later. But anyway, so it turns out Cleveland made a lot of big mistakes with the new franchise, especially their first-round picks. Courtney Brown didn't pan out. Trent Richardson, they decided to trade to Indianapolis because they didn't have faith in him. Johnny Mansell, well, he was Johnny Mansell. What do you expect? They had a lot of guards and tackles and all that, they basically were making the offensive line their top priority. Instead of running backs, wide receivers, defensive players that could really do huh? There's a lot of documentaries on the, on the new Cleveland Browns. The only in Cleveland one on YouTube is my best bet to watch. So anyway, they had such good players. Joe Thomas was basically the best Browns player ever, and he's a tackle, a new Browns guy. Cleveland, of course, suffered an 0-16 season in 2017. However, in 2018, they actually improved themselves. They were just they just missed the 500 mark at 7, 8, and 1. But that was amazing, especially that went over the Jets when that bar opened the fridge with Cleveland winning the game. That was just pure fucking amazing. So anyway, the Cleveland Browns are here to stay somehow. And they got... The star quarterback from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield, they got OBJ, they got Jarvis Landry, they got some good players to actually come to Cleveland for once. But so far, not really a lot has happened. The new Cleveland Browns have only made the playoffs once in their career. That was in 2002 when they snatched the, the five seed and would play the Pittsburgh Steelers at Heinz Field. And lo and behold, Cleveland had like a 20-point lead. In Pittsburgh, of all places, could this be the magic elixir? But somehow Tommy Maddox, the comeback player of the year in the NFL that year, shocked everyone by giving Pittsburgh the title win, give Pittsburgh the big win over the Browns in the Browns' only playoff game ever. Kelly Holcomb was the quarterback, not Tim Couch. Tim Couch was basically jeered out of Cleveland. Of course, as I said in the... One about the San Francisco 49ers that I think I said that, you know, when the immaculate reception happened between Pittsburgh and Oakland, at this, on the same day was a divisional matchup between the Cowboys and the Niners, and that's when Dallas brought Roger Staubach from the fort, from a rotation guy to basically the main quarterback to knock San Francisco 12 bells. Yeah, I said that in the Niners retrospect. But, man, it's weird how the Browns choked against the Steelers. And then the same day, the Giants actually put on a clinic. And 
choke to the Niners. But it wasn't their fault. It was the stupid referee for making the wrong person illegal down the field. That would have meant that things would have upset and the Giants would have tried again for a field goal. Fortunately, it didn't work out for that. Anyway, what I'm doing, it's the 2007 Browns. They were 10-6. and six. They were close. They lost a couple of playoff tie breaks to the Tennessee Titans. So I'm basically making the Cleveland in yeah, the Cleveland Indians, my ass, the Cleveland Browns into the sixth seed. Replacing the Titans, they would take on the number three seed San Diego Chargers. If the Browns do beat the Chargers, they will have to take on the number one seed, that being the undefeated New England Patriots. So, yeah. And if they can somehow beat New England, this would be a miracle of all miracles. This will probably be the biggest karma bite to me. Hopefully it's not. So Cleveland has Derek Anderson, Jamal Lewis, formerly of the Raven, Braylon Edwards, Georgia Officials, Kellen Winslow. Man, I think I like this team already. But Phil Rivers, NLT, and Antonio Gates for the Chargers. So it was legitimately raining in that um, game between the Titans and the Chargers. So I'll basically put that there. Well, what a waste of a time. The Cleveland Browns ended up losing the game to the San Diego Chargers. So basically, that's what if it's Bruins. The Chargers do face the Steel, the Colts with the Chargers do somehow get to the 2008 AFC title game against the Patriots. Patriots end up losing the Super Bowl to the Giants. But hey, Cleveland made it close. They only lost by five. They had a 10 9 lead. Yikes, the, the Chargers did not get a touchdown. The only touchdown was Cleveland's, and that was Jamal Lewis. What? How the fuck can that happen? Jamal Lewis, 103 yards running. Good job. LT, 84 yards. Receiving and all that. Joe Joe Fishers had a 58-yard reception, and that was all. I know. Boy, I see what. got a 38-yarder. Derek Anderson, 9 for 19, 147. And a pick. Phil Rivers, 13 for 23, 161. The only. Clinton Hart with the only. Phil Dawson missed a 41-year field goal. I think that would have been key if he had made it. Keating, 40, 41, 32, 33, 36. This is just like the 1990 NFC one NFC title when the Giants beat the Niners without even scoring a touchdown. Just agony on Cleveland's face. But after all, it is Cleveland. 